used to be all about getting away from it all, escaping to the wilderness where there's peace and quiet and no people. But if the sport of Monroe bagging has any major fault, it is this. It forces those people who just wish to get the ticks to come to places where there's as much peace and quiet as there is at Disneyland. And this mountain is a very good example of that. It's the Monroe closest to a major city. It's Ben Lomond, which is only half an hour's drive from Glasgow. It's 3,129 feet. And of course, this is not a new phenomenon, having people crawling all over it, because in the 18th and 19th century, it was very popular with tourists indeed. And now I'm afraid the bonny banks are crawling with jet skiers, windsurfers, caravanners and shell suits, although I have nothing against shell suits, they're very attractive. But one can see why, because this has often been described as the lungs of Glasgow, an area of very high amenity value, uh, where you can just get into the car and get away from it all. Well, you can try to get away from it all, but the sounds of Rower Denon will probably pursue you for the first section of the path through the forest. But it's a very pretty start to the walk. In Gaelic, it is bound Lomond. It means a beacon hill. I, th I think that is very probable. Now, this is as far as you can get with your flip-flops. Because this is what the National Trust, amongst themselves obviously, laughingly call a granny stopper. It's not that they hate old age pensioners, it's just that if you can't negotiate something as simple as this, then for your own safety you shouldn't really be going any further up the mountain. And incidentally, they didn't put this here, it's the pressure of boots that's created it. The National Trust for Scotland bought Ben Lomond in 1984 to preserve this beautiful, if overused, area for the nation. Although even in such safe hands, preserving the hill against the huge tide of visitors is proving problematic. It's Forestry Commission land in the lower slopes, but the Trust's land starts when you leave the trees. The route is very simple, just look for the sign at the base car park, then follow the huge trench of a path to the top. And this indeed is the real problem on Ben Lomond. In fact, recently the National Trust became so concerned about the devastating effects of erosion on the hillside that they banned organised mass charity walks and races from the Ben. The downside of its popularity is only too visible and it's still causing the Trust great concern. How many people would you say visited the Ben in a year? In a year? I think we must be getting well into the 100,000. And what's your attitude to that amount of people visiting it? Well, I'm quite happy with it. But the, the problem with that number of people is the, the pressure on the path. This is the real problem. People equals pressure. Pressure equals damage. Damage equals money that was spent on the path. So what kind of damage do they incur? Well, the erosion problems, they, they cut through. By not walking on the path, they cut through, they cut to the sides of the path, break through the top vegetation, along comes the rain and washes the whole thing out again. They then take another step to the side of the path, same thing again and you get any situations that you have up the top of the hip, up the top of the bend, and you've got something like 40, 50 metres of path. So how can you, you stop that, really? Well, you can't. That's just the trouble. All you can do is try and contain it by doing path work. Ideally, what we want to do is to make a better surface, but a smaller surface. Um, to that end, we're using volunteers, conservation volunteers, friends of the bend, uh, and professional organisations who spend some weeks on the bend, uh, and basically to, to, make, to lay out a new path line uh, which hopefully will be a lot better for people to walk on and they will try to encourage them to use that rather than wander at will. So until a trust finds the money to make major repairs, the best thing you can do is try to keep to the path and avoid causing more damage because if it gets any worse than this, you'll soon be able to get a bus to the top Well, unfortunately, it's a rather uninspiring slog up that section of the path. It's not hard to understand why it's so badly eroded. It's single file only down there. But uh, the views really open up when you get this far. For instance, you can see fantastically well down the south end of Loch Lomond, the largest area of freshwater in Britain. There's a, an interesting trivial pursuit question for you. And this is where we get our first glimpse of the top. 